Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the shed. I'm Lonnie. Hey, good morning. Welcome back. I'm Candace. Well, we have some orders coming out, going out today, not coming out, <laughs> going out today. And um, before we do that, we we had we pulled a few questions from viewer comments in the videos, and we thought we'd go ahead and answer those before we take care of the orders. Yeah, I like viewer questions because they give me a chance to flap my gums for a while. Y'all know I like to do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wonder how many words. Like I was looking the other day um, at this, just this channel right here. You know, I've got over a thousand videos on shed flips. And how many were on the other channel? On garage flips? Yeah. Probably about the same. Yeah, if y'all don't know, he used for some reason he had a. I don't don't. <laughs> he had another channel before doing garage. Oh flips. my god, I don't even want to talk about and that. And at one time he had two going, and now he just has one, or we have one. So. I don't want to even want to talk about that. <laughs> There's so many fails and and I have an idea. I'll make another channel and you know a bunch. Well, let me make it better. <laughs> you know, if one channel is good, two channels is better. Yeah. <laughs> and then like no, because you're only one person. Right. So it, yeah. Any anyway, I don't want to go into that. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> anyway, we have four questions that we we pulled to talk about. Um, the first one is from Mr. Muffer. Uh, okay. <laughs> what does that mean? Anyway, just read the question. We don't need to well, go. Well, I didn't read the full name. What? I'm not going to. Let me to. see. Oh, God. All right, whatever. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the problem I see with cross posting. Well, I mean, what? How is this dude 13 or something? <laughs> like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> the problem I see with cross posting items is if an item sells on more than one platform, now what do you do? Since most things you have one of, personally, if I do decide to post someplace other than eBay, I would not do items listed on eBay. I would do other items. We have touched on this before. So this is kind of what our strategy is because we found that if something's gonna sell fast on eBay, it's gonna be within the first week or two. So we decided that when we list something on eBay, we're gonna hold off uh, about two weeks before we cross post it, it could, um, yeah it could still happen yep we just we try to stay on top of it and um probably not as diligently as we should i mean in it hasn't been an issue yet but yeah. like you know in fairness you, it could happen and yeah. when it does it'll suck but the reason i put this question like we've actually covered this subject you know ad infinitum but the part that you talk about uh mr muffer six nine <laughs> is you know if i do decide to post some place other than ebay i would not do items listed on ebay the reality is is like what's the point across it, it, yeah there's no point at yeah, that point yeah. there's no point in doing that because i think in my opinion like for most stuff most used stuff eBay is your market. eBay is the place. Yeah. Like, yeah, we're we are posting other we're posting stuff on Macari, Poshmark, Etsy. But if you made me choose one place, it would be eBay. Yeah. Because that's where we sell it. Like that's the the one place where you can sell just about anything. Mm -hmm. And there's that's where the biggest audience is. All these other places we we cross post to, they're bit players. They're, they they really are like yeah. they're small fries we're trying to squeeze out an extra five to ten sales a week by doing that and we don't we don't pretend to think it's anything other than that so you know the listing somewhere else and not listing on ebay really just is not an option i don't think it would right i i don't i don't think that would serve its purpose to have some things here and some things there that's that's completely but, not the reason but bottom line is there some risk involved with cross posting yep yeah there is are you willing to accept the risk it sounds like you're not uh we are it could bite us you know i it, it, if it does bite us and it will what then would you do? that's part of his question if it what would you do well we'll we'll ship to the platform that is most strict about canceling orders yeah which will probably be ebay yep that's what we'll do mm -hmm. and then we'll write out a heartfelt apology maybe try and um give them a coupon or offers something. yeah make some kind of hey else. we don't have that but we have this and we'll give you a great price on or what you know whatever yeah. but then 
beg up and down for forgiveness. That's what we'll do. Yeah. You know, because at that point we're wrong. We got caught speeding a little bit, right? Like, but that's the risk. Sometimes you got to take a little risk. Now, the one thing that we did cross post at the same time um, that was a really hot seller was the Draculauras. And I made sure to not have the same exact double mm -hmm. on both platforms. So there is some little bit of give to that, but every other one of our items, no, it's, it's all one offs. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Right, do you want the risk or not? That's the only question. Mm -hmm. All right, this next one is a doozy. Check this out, y'all. All right, this is from Josh Munoz. Did you see the new photo option feature and buying feedback? Looks like eBay's copying Etsy now. Buyers can leave photos now in feedback. And no, we did not. We had no idea about that new uh, feature until we read that comment right there yeah and um yeah so right behind candace on this other screen mm -hmm. i pulled up a an order we did from the boxery for some poly mailers yep that we haven't left feedback yet for and at the bottom not only can you add a photo you can add up to you can do like a little gallery yep. uh, up to five photos and it says photos coming soon try adding photos of this item to your feedback will be displaying them soon yeah so must be photos of your own and follow ebay's photo policy so sounds to me like they're not wanting you to to take photos somewhere off the internet and put them in your feedback which yeah. makes sense that's can, not the purpose of it can, yeah i mean what what is going to happen here uh by uh, sellers are going to be held accountable for the condition of their items you think i think so i mean i think that's already happening I know, but it's kind of a case of he said, she said. Right. Uh, so you think, so now instead of just saying that an item was poorly packaged, those pe buyers are going to show how an item was packaged. Or this item had a stain that was not disclosed. And then mm -hmm. they're going to the put it out there. Responds, no, no, it wasn't, you know. Well, what is this? Yeah. Which, and I mean, in fairness, it, stuff can happen after it gets in the buyer's hands. Right. But this just, um, this is just an interesting uh, little mixture it's, into the pot you know what you know what it's gonna do it's gonna make it much more interesting to uh go to sellers and look at their feedback and look at the photos like yeah. people are gonna spend a lot more time in the feedback now yeah and like what's is there anything wrong with me say just taking a picture of myself like a selfie like you know whatever and then just uploading that to it like what is ebay gonna do with that yeah, I don't know. And, and and what if like what if somebody posts like some uh, adult type well, then things? Well, won't publish it. I yeah. wonder if they're going to police it. How are they going to do that? Yeah. Are they going to have like? I guess the seller can report it. Hey, uh, can you please remove this from my feedback? Right. Yeah. Um, and it is interesting they mentioned Etsy because I do whenever I go on Etsy and look at reviews, those are the ones I go straight for are the ones but with pictures. Typically, they're the ones with the pictures I've noticed like on Etsy and even on like Amazon and stuff, right? It's usually... It's usually good stuff. Like, yeah, it's usually like... Not on Amazon. I no? would say Etsy is like they're pleased with the product. They're like, this is how I'm have yeah. this is how I have it displayed in my home or whatever. Look, it's a great addition to my collection and then they show it with, right. you know... I think that I think it's mostly going to be that. I hope. I hope it is too. <laughs> but how many y'all knew about this feature already, and how how do y'all feel about it? I feel. How do you you think it's good or bad? I like it because we we are we try we try. I mean we we are honest with our listings, and we try if we I, don't if we don't talk about every little imperfection like these nutcrackers. I, if I see an imperfection, I try to get a good close-up of it. So there's no doubt that it's there, that, you know, they won't miss it. Yeah, on one hand, I feel like there's a chance to abuse this. But on the other hand, I, I, I do, in general, feel like transparency is a good thing. Yeah. I, I really, like, I feel like, oh, I think overall I'm good with that. Yeah, I am too. I'm, I think I'm okay I with it. I feel confident in our listings and how I do we too. operate that it'll be okay. I do too. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as if somebody's trying to scam, scammer's going to scam. They're going to find that doesn't a way help a scam with or without that. That's not all. That's going to do. Well, yeah. I mean, they get a piece of clothing in and they don't like it. They can pour 
cup of orange juice. Alone. Yeah, but then they, they've always been able to do that. I don't see I how. I say, they're going to find a way to do it. Putting that in the feedback doesn't help you scam. Yeah, it just gives them another way. It, it helped. Yeah, I don't, I don't see how that helps a scammer. Yeah. It, except to like smear your name, you know, or something yeah. like that. But uh, yeah, I, how do y'all feel about this? I'm going to say. I'm okay with it. I'm, I'm going to say let's wait and see. <laughs> there's going to be some interesting there's some interesting things are going to come up that i'm sure we're going to show y'all later on yeah all right this next question is from big toe <laughs> <laughs> is this he's referring to our nutcracker buy on the video on that is this a limited targeted audience and then he has in parentheses boomers yeah that bo calling people boomers ain't cool in my opinion I understand the money part, but I'm 57, would probably never own one ever. Oh, well, that's a lot of stuff we sell, that there's a limited market. And for me, that's that's sometimes a good thing. That does mean that things will take longer to sell, but it also means a lot of times you can get more money for them, you know? Right. Yeah, because boom, like when you say boomers, probably mean, probably mean a little younger than boomers honestly because like i don't feel like boomers are at the age now in nursing homes in uh, not not necessarily but i mean they're in their 70s and i'm not saying people that are in their 70s don't buy on ebay yeah but i don't think that they're buying collections may, at this point in maybe maybe not yeah. I th so i think maybe i can say speaking for my mom she's ready to start moving stuff right she, ha she does have collections on um, some good things and she's ready to be done with it she wants to just I, yeah, I, I, so I don't. I don't think our target audience on these nutcrackers is boomers per se. Yeah, but I, I, I think people. I think the use of boomer has like, like really slipped a lot. Like I think most people that are like twenty something, like if we say something that like eight, like shows how old we are, it'd be like okay, boomer even to us, right. and we're we're in our late forties now. So I Oh, you're really you're really inking that one. <laughs> what? I'm in my late forties. The latest of the forties, but yes. He will be fifty in four months, y'all. And Candace will be fifty before me. So <laughs> in six days less. Six days before me. Yeah. But yeah, I mean I th I think it is a good I think it's something good to keep in mind. Like, yeah, I do think um for the nutcrackers, I think that Look, we're not delusional. We know they're going to be slow moving. Uh, they're not. You don't think so? No. Okay. We've sold two thousand dollars worth of nutcrackers already. Is okay. that how slow is that? I know, but <laughs> in May. Yeah. No, no. I think it's a great market. Okay. I disagree. Like I, I, I know what slow moving inventory does when you list it, and that ain't slow. <laughs> we've listed what about twelve k, thirteen k of mm -hmm. of it now. Yeah. And we've sold two. And yeah. it's May yeah. for something that's kind of seasonal? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. No, that is not slow, Candace. I'll tell you, I can show you some, some slow movers. Oh, I know some slow movers in here. <laughs> this ain't slow. Anyway, what I, my point was, even if it were slow moving, I would be okay with it because of the profit we stand to make from it. You know? Yeah. And and as far as the age of the age of the target audience, it's I do think it's a good point because it's like... Um, it's like I, I always, it's like I always say, uh, stamp like stamp collectors. Yeah, there are stamp collectors out there. However, uh, there are no new stamp collectors being born today. No, nobody in general. I mean, I know you could probably find one exception or whatever. Today, there's probably how many babies being born across the world. Right. And none of them will grow up to be a stamp collector. Or not, not the huge majority of them. Maybe right. A very a one off. Or, or and and like there's there are probably not, for the most part there probably aren't. Uh, well, new... let's just put it out there. For the most part now, um, the generations after us are not big collectors of things. No. Of it, collections. No. Except for your pop culture items. Right. Video yeah. games, Funko Pops. Action figures, um, yeah, dolls. For the most part, cheaper stuff. Yeah. Sort of. Yeah. Stuff that doesn't take up as much room. Right. Like, people aren't buying, like, China cabinets now and displaying their China. Yeah, so, you like, know? in 10 years, would we do this buy? We might... Would Maybe think, not. We might would think differently about it because 
the more time goes by the less time people are collecting stuff although in 10 years it might become fashion again no, to I, collect items. i don't think so i i don't i don't know yeah. you might be right but i like to think of these as maybe not someone collecting them but it being a gift like they would have one to display at christmas um maybe if they were a pumpkin farmer someone would give them a pumpkin. <laughs> right <laughs> but bottom line um yeah the, I, I think our target audience for these things for these guys it is limited it is older yeah they're year over year they will that that market will probably be smaller than it was the year before yep and that does add i guess some amount of risk to it but also that age group audience um they got a lot of money yep they got a lot of money and they got a lot of time on their hands yeah so and they are surfing the internet now yes they are and they are shopping on the internet they are the internet's been around a long time so 60 60 year old people when the internet came into fashion like 30 years ago they were 30 years old so we're not dealing with like 10 years 20 years ago 15 years ago older people you just automatically assume they weren't computer savvy and they weren't shopping online right. that's not the fact that's not the case now because like we're 15 more years down the line and a lot of these people had grew up with computers so mm -hmm. yeah yeah i mean uh, you make a good point but i i think it's kind of a kind of a feature to be selling to that demo instead of selling to um yeah 20 somethings they buy a lot but they ain't got much money right but the good thing is they're going to be around a lot longer yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right the next question is from beach cities thrifting I realize this video is from a month ago, but I have a question for you. I heard a rumor that eBay frowns upon their customers using cross-posting sites. I use List Perfectly. Obviously, they can tell who is using List Perfectly and who is not. Do you think sales might be affected by this? I have almost 500 items on eBay and I'm not selling much at all. Doing well on Etsy, Mercari, and Poshmark. Are they penalizing me somehow? I know they have their ways to do so. What do you think? um it's certainly possible do they are they able to detect if you're using this perfectly i don't know i i don't think so yeah i don't think they would be because i think list perfectly mimics like as a bot basically and mimics the the motions of a human actually all the mouse clicks and typing and all that they certainly could detect it if they wanted to i think but i don't think it would be that easy I think they would have to implement something that detects um, your location, which would make it a pain because then we'd probably have to <laughs> re-log in every time, right? I, yeah, I don't know. I, I, <laughs> bottom line, I don't, I, I don't like on one side, I, I don't see where it would behoove eBay to throttle sales on their platform because keep in mind whenever we sell something ebay makes money that's the only way ebay makes money is when we sell things yeah if they're limiting you then that means you're going to sell somewhere else and another platform is going to get that money and, and not ebay and wouldn't that encourage more of that behavior right to discourage that behavior uh i to discourage people from cross posting uh what it would seem like you would want to give them more sales <laughs> yeah, yeah. right yeah. It, it, if ebay could like even give sales out like all they could do is put things in front of people right. limit visibility or, right. or increase it i'm um, not saying it's not impossible no. because i've heard crazier things you know? yeah I, yeah it, and here's the problem when you talk about things like this because like if there wasn't any history to ebay and I got this question, I would say, no, that's ridiculous. That's so petty. eBay wouldn't do that. That's a big corporation. eBay wouldn't be petty. eBay wouldn't be that petty, but listen, I hate to bring this up, but I, 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 it's new enough to where it's still a factor when you think about things like this, right? Um, it, it, this is with regards to the e-commerce bite scandal. Now, as far as I know, everyone that was involved in this is gone now. Uh, and I'm hope hopefully they cleaned it up, but let me read this. Uh, and this is in regards to Ina. I might be saying that right. It might be on Ina. Ina. Ina and David Steiner, who own and run 
e-commerce bites. Members of eBay's executive leadership had long been bothered by the couple's posts. Under pressure in early 2019 to enhance performance, the company felt a new sense of urgency. For example, in April 2019, Winnig sent the post about how outsized his compensation was compared to typical employees to eBay's chief communications officer at the time, Steve Weimer. Weimer replied that eBay was going to crush this lady. That Talking to the CEO at the time, Winnig. So this pettiness went all the way to the very top. Winnig texted Weimer weeks later, take her down. Weimer took their concerns to the head of eBay security division, Jim Ball, whose team began harassing the Steiners at home and online. Weimer texted Ball that Ina St- Ina Steiner was a biased troll who needs to be burned down, that he wants to see ashes, and that Ball should do whatever it takes. That's terrifying. Yeah. The Steiners were harassed and threatened both online and physically in their home by deliveries of such things as a bloody pig mask, live cockroaches and spiders, a funeral wreath, and large orders of pizza. Pornographic magazines, magazines with David Steiner's name on them were sent to a neighbor's house. So, given all that, right, and a lot of y'all probably saw the 60 Minutes thing, um, it's hard to give eBay benefit of the doubt. This is too fresh. Although, because of that happening, they are under a microscope. So, but it's still possible. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, they told us at that point in 2019. They would do whatever. They did that. Yeah. So for me to tell someone else that eBay would not retaliate people that are cross-posting, I can't do that yeah. <laughs> because of this. Yeah. Because of what their their the past. History, yeah. Now, like I said, all those people are gone, and I'm assuming like they clean things up, but I don't know that. I don't know that at all. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I don't think I and I do think about that whenever I make YouTube videos. Now I'm like. Don't get too harsh. <laughs> if I really, if I really go after eBay, are, are there going to be text messages? Messages, burn, burn, shed flips down. We're going to be getting a lot of pizza for dinner. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. If our neighbor starts getting some weird magazines with my name on them, I didn't order them, Candace. I promise. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it's real. Like we're we're kind of laughing. It's not funny. Um, I'm hoping that that was a wake-up call for ebay although it went all the way to the ceo yeah all the way to the freaking ceo there was criminal charges and everything so. yeah I, I think the ceo winnig i think he escaped criminal but uh they took down people under him yeah yeah like the people that actually do the, did the things carried them out they i mean they had to face criminal charges they reported directly to him though yeah and those text messages between him he ordered the hit basically yeah right like so it's crazy so given that like they put they put anybody in the position that is going to give like an opinion about you know would ebay do this the realm of things that ebay has done in the past uh knows no bounds so for now i have to assume it's boundless and within the realm of possibility until we have a little more time to uh to get past that yeah so i don't know i don't think so so lo- short answer i don't think so but i don't know i don't know yeah. <laughs> uh we do have orders to pull so we better get to it all right let's go all right bunch of orders to get out today so let's go ahead and get started all righty uh first item is a razor r35 Okay. Sold that for 18 plus ship. Our little money drawer there, huh? Yeah. Uh, we had someone reach out to us yesterday. They wanted to do like a bundle. It's a bunch of Boy Scout stuff plus three Lego minifigs. So we bundled all that together for them for $90. And it is on 7 Delta. It's in a Boy Scout bag. Okay, yeah. Candace put this together yesterday. made the deal and well first you had to go into each one of those listings and then i guess uh download or screenshot i can show y'all later uh, after we get orders out what i did yeah this is interested in seeing that yeah this is a bag full of stuff though it's actually actually some really cool stuff it's a ton of stuff yeah 
All right, next item we have uh, Nutcracker Six Delta. It's a musician with a French horn. Six it's, Delta. Yeah, right here. Oh, right that's right here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we sold, uh, we all see, but we sold some, we sold a bunch of little nutcrackers. Yeah, we sold like three or four last night. Which is good. Uh, he went for uh, 60 plus ship. And that's a Richard Glasser, huh? Yeah, you know your RG, huh? Well, yeah, when I see that RG on that, um, on that little beer mug or whatever there. Yeah. Yeah. All right, next item is an LSU football national champs banner slash flag on 10 alpha okay hopefully we have that still i wonder what that would look like up here i imagine you must have put it in something huh is it in that tube right there maybe no no that's a poster Huh, okay, I'm gonna have to cut away for a minute and get up on my step stool and see if it's up there. Okay, I'm looking all over here, but actually, like, we, we rearranged the stuff up here quite a bit. I didn't realize it was that big. Yeah, this is it right here. Oh, it, wow. it, it migrated over to 11 Alpha somehow. That thing is huge. There we go, 36 by 24. Yeah, no, it's cool. They got a good deal on that. $22.49. Yeah, we paid $5 for that at a uh, garage sale mm -hmm. I don't know maybe six months to a year ago something like that all right we have another nutcracker on five charlie dash r and I have this picture pulled up <laughs> oh yeah I'm gonna need that because like we don't know what to call them look luckily for me the previous owner on a lot of these look I had a, I listed a bunch of smaller soldiers and they were from like all kind of countries and she went through oh not on that one but I'll show y'all on another one uh, 45 for that. What, she wrote the brand on them or something? No, she wrote what they were, like, um... Wait, see. Which guy is, is he that guy? That guy, yeah. Because they all look, man, we got to be careful with these. I know, that's why I pulled the... But yeah, so she went and she wrote, like, what they were. Danish major. And the, when she bought it, okay. yeah. Well, we're going to, yeah, there's no writing on here, like, like the one on the photo there, but... Let's go look at this like real, real carefully and make sure. Yeah. That's the last thing we need to do is to mix up nutcrackers, especially with so many of these going international. Right. That would be bad news there. Yeah. Let's got see. like a black round pillbox type hat. What? Yep, that's him. I agree. That's him. Okay. Better lay this down. I don't want to fall on these nutcrackers. Okay. To Charlie, a uh, audio cassette tape case. Yeah, I bought some, uh, if I can get to it, let's see, yeah, I can get to it. Bought some tapes at a church sale for $2, I think. And they came in this, and I listed the tapes already. Yeah, and got 12 for that. Yeah, the tapes were worth way more than 12 but yeah, just selling. I love being able to sell every part of a buy like that, though. Yeah. All right, our next item is um, some vintage shelf liner, CC6. It's got green leaves on it. Okay. This is some stuff we got from Guy. Yep, I got it. Right here. $11.24. Okay. All right, we have another uh, nutcracker on that shelf. He's a, um, a beef eater. You know what that is, huh? Yeah, that's the uh, palace guards, right? For, like yeah. for the... With the big tall hat. Yeah. Same Man, location. I was going to say for the queen. There is no queen anymore, though. For the king. Yeah. Must be that guy. Yeah, he's right there. There's there's a similar guy over here. Yeah, but it's this one. It we'll, is this we'll one. We'll double check against the photo. Okay. Well, you even have a cowboy. Look, this dude has a uh, revolver. Yeah. <laughs> huh. I like him out his hat as I grew all day. Yep, sold him for 50. Dope. All right, on three alpha, a lot of three Game of Thrones books for $11. Yeah. I think we, cer we certainly thought these were probably worth a little more when we bought them. That is okay. Oh wait, that's not them. Yeah, it is. So 
Sorry, I'm having to swap stuff around there. We probably paid a dollar a piece for those, huh? I imagine. At a garage sale. Yeah. Alrighty, in the alien drawer, uh, TI Inspire software. When you said that, I thought you were saying TI Inspired software. Oh. Like, you know, like a knockoff. You know how inspired <laughs> by? Like the perfume. Right. <laughs> sold that for $18.74. Two Delta, we sold a Deuce. Yep, still got a box full of those guys. Y'all y'all aren't gonna be seeing quite as many monster high sales though. Because Draculaura is gone. Alright, we have another soldier, a Spanish officer this time. For fifty. Let's go. Is he on the same shelf? Yeah. Well he's, he's got a Darth Vader. He looks like he has a Darth Vader helmet on top of his head. <laughs> These are all the ones I listed on. Uh, oh that's him. Yeah, yesterday. Yeah. How did I know he was a Spanish officer? Hmm. It says so. Oh wow! <laughs> you wouldn't have. Well, you might have. You I were would gonna have, have found to. it with Google Lens, but right. a lot of people um, don't know, so they just put soldier. You know. So I'm assuming she knew what she was talking about. Yeah. I feel like you. You're probably one of the best researchers in the business. All right, yeah. you ready for the next item? Yeah. Italiana. Yeah, so I put Italiana and a bunch of other stuff on 25% off sale. I probably won't reduce it much more than that anytime so soon. she bought two of them. Two, okay. Yeah. Two copies of Italiana. We haven't sold an Italiana in a while. Yeah. So that was good to see. So we got 30... 30 a piece for those, right? Correct. Okay. In the smalls drawer, Jack's Pacific WWE ring bell with hammer. Yeah, I it's remember. It's been listed a little while. It's been a while. It's right there. Yep. That's all for 10. Okay. 10 Bravo cheese smart hot rollers. Yeah, we sold the Sets. Yeah, we had two sets, and the other set didn't actually. The base didn't work, so Candace sold the rollers and, and the, the bag and the clips. Yeah. Um, and then this is a complete set. We ended up getting forty nine dollars and forty nine cents for that. Right. We effectively have seven dollars and fifty cents into this. Correct. So. All right. And that's everything going out today. Okay, that's a good bit of stuff. Let me get this stuff back. A really good sales day. I wanted to show y'all this. I've got everything packed right here, big old pile. And then I still have those rollers over there, the hot rollers to pack. And I was looking at the shipping just now. They're going to Texas. And I'll have to see if this weight ends up being the actual final weight, but five pounds, 10, eight, six. We did parcel select as the shipping method and look 814 if you go down the priority mail seven dollars and twenty cents so <laughs> this is a case where um we're saving almost a dollar we're able to give a service upgrade to the customer and get the the insurance and use a priority box which that saves another 70 80 cents right there too so uh, yeah, make sure you check all shipping options whenever you're going back and forth between parcel and priority and UPS. Um, prices are changing, so you, you gotta stay on top of these. All right, it is much later in the afternoon. It is well past quitting time. I just finished editing video and um, Candace had to go run some errands earlier while she was gone. Uh, yesterday, I was talking to y'all about, or we showed y'all, yeah, that was yesterday, we showed y'all yeah. the estate sale stuff from Sunday, and I said I was going to list it all. We paid $120 for all of it. I listed half of it yesterday, and I finished off the rest of it today. And here it is. That's This is what it ends up being 
$652 on 23 listings. So about 5X money. Yeah, about 5X money before fees, yeah. which is like, that's typically where we sit, like with um, most garage sale and estate sale stuff, I would say. Yeah. Somewhere around 500% yeah. before fees. Sometimes with the occasional 10X or 20X or, you know, those are the, the big ones. So that is going to be it for this one. Thanks a bunch for watching and we will see y'all again very soon. Bye y'all. Bye.